It's interesting. It's such an interesting dichotomy. I mean, in, in terms mm. of her being able to write with such familiarity about about a sort of rural life, mm. while her lived life as an adult was living so much through, I mean, living in Manchester and in the Industrial Revolution, etc. I think it was just such a potent part, you yeah. know, oh. as I think all childhoods are, aren't they, for better or worse? <clears throat> if you I survive think. it, they always say about writers, what if you survive your, chi your childhood, you have you know, all the material you need to be a writer for the rest of your life or something. I Absolutely. Think. I think it's no no surprise that memoirs, when people write their memoirs or their autobiographies, that usually I find the most interesting part, the, the most vividly written is the childhood part. Um, and I think we can, you know, that's probably true of all of us. It's the, we have such vivid memories. Because you've adapted both or, or worked on productions of both Austin and Gaskell, I mean, obviously... Mm -hmm. They were not contemporaries and actually o only overlapped by, I'm trying to think, I mean, in terms of birth and death dates by, what, five or six years. What strikes you in each of them? So, well, um, I read Austin a lot when I was a lot younger than when I read Gaskell, actually. Uh, I didn't read Gaskell until I did Wives and Daughters, strangely. Uh, but I was reading, I read Pride and Prejudice, I guess, when I was about 14, 15, um, absolutely captivated mm. by it. Um, and I think what they are very, very different writers. Um, I mean, it's not a word I use uh, lightly, but I would say Austin is a is a genius. And I think what is wonderful is that you can read Pride and Prejudice at fourteen, and you get a huge amount out of it. You read it at twenty or thirty or forty, and every single time you read it, you get something different out of it. You see different things in it. Um, I mean, the pleasure just deepens, and I suppose it's to do with your own maturity, but, you know, you, you start to be able to see Mrs. Bennett's point of view being married to Mr. Yeah. Bennett, whereas <laughs> when you first read it, he's wonderfully witty, and yeah. obviously Elizabeth is his favorite, and, you know, every girl wants to be Elizabeth. So you you identify more with him, and then you do actually realize this poor woman has a lot has, to put up will have no money when he dies. <laughs> and when she says we'll be in the hedgerows, she's not exaggerating yeah. too much if if she doesn't marry at least one or two off to, to men who've got money. So it is a, a, a real situation. I've read less Gaskell than I have Austin. Do you think Gaskell's sort of, not sidetracked, but by trying to deal so clearly with issues of the Industrial Revolution or women, etc., uh, does that sort of disallow her from creating as as well-rounded ca characters? Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, I I suppose I know Austin's work much, much better, but the, the novels of Gaskell's that I've concentrated on have not been the Industrial Revolution mm. novels. Uh, what the work I really love of hers is the more rural work. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I like Wives and Daughters and Cranford and the other books that we have chosen to put with Cranford each time we've uh, uh, adapted it. So I suppose that that is my heartland. <laughs> so, and I do find that she writes those characters very deeply. I think what what attracts people to Cranford, it was hugely popular in, in England. I mean, it had 10 million every week watching mm -hmm. it and, and became a sort of byword in newspapers for a way of life or yeah. a way of approaching life. I mean, even in fashion pages or property pages, <laughs> Cranford was dragged into it. It's about small lives. It's about ordinary people. There are no heroics there or no apparent heroics. I think what she's doing, which is what we were trying to do, was to celebrate um, the detail of small lives. The, the ladies of Cranford have the same prejudices. They're, they can be as petty and as silly and as fearsome of change as, mm -hmm. as we can all be. But I think what what redeems them, and this is what I think attracts people to it, is that they they're also brave and generous and resilient, and they have... That they have a decency and a courtesy and a restraint about them, which people feel we've all lost. Some people feel is, is <laughs> we have lost. Yeah. That whereas the self is at the centre for mostly these days, there was a, a real denial of putting oneself at the centre in the ladies of Cranford, and that the community was larger than the self. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that no, is, that, that I, is the point. I mean, I I watched Cranford here and loved it. It was actually it was very successful for yeah. for for masterpiece. So hence hence the 
return to Cranford. So, you know, Austin Gaskell is a little bit of a Sophie's Choice. Which would you love reading more, and which is which have you had more fun adapting? No, <laughs> this is really difficult. Um, I mean, I love both of them, and I love them for different reasons, and also for some of the same reasons. I suppose if if I was only allowed to take one book away with me, <laughs> apart from Shakespeare, onto my desert <laughs> island, then I would take Pride and Prejudice mm, because it's mm. been a passion since I was 14. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. You're listening to Penguin Classics On Air.